When I say noise, we need to have a joyful noise in the house. Come on. Woo! Come on. That's good. That's good. Awesome. Okay. What a wonderful God we serve. Can we have an iman for that? Do we serve a wonderful God? Do we serve an amazing God? We serve a God who loves us, right? It's a, he's a wonderful God. I'm, I mean, you can ask for no other better God than Him. Amen? Yeah, the one who loves you and me unconditionally. And He is waiting for an opportunity to bless you. We have misunderstood God. We thought, we think... God is waiting for an opportunity to punish us. God is waiting for an opportunity. Right from the Old Testament, if you read, we look at God, at, we have a very bad picture about God. Are you there? So if you have uh, the Jews, where the Old Testament is uh, mostly around they had a very bad picture about God and the the more you read the Old Testament the more scared you become because when we were reading we see God is punishing this one God is bringing fire from here it's all like you it sounds like God is angry his his mood is off right and so the Jews had a very bad idea about who God is. Amen. They didn't know who this God is. And so they tried everything to please this God. They would, they would uh, build a temple. They would uh, slaughter cattle. Thousand Solomon slaughtered thousands, thousands of cattle to please this God because like any other people on earth who with different religion, the Jews also thought God was bloodthirsty. Do you understand? Many people think God is bloodthirsty. He loves blood. <laughs> and so we try to sacrifice slit open the throat, pour the blood, and give him the blood. Even Abraham thought, God is bloodthirsty. So when Abraham sa- God said to Abraham, I want your son, bring him. So Abraham, has, Abraham said, okay, I will sacrifice my son. Do you think Abraham is a good father? Do you think Abraham is a good father? He's sacrificing his son. He's going to slit his throat and he's going to kill his son because God asked for a sacrifice. So down the mountain, Abraham had a very bad picture about God. He thought he's asking for a sacrifice. But on the way, he tells his son, listen, God is going to provide the sacrifice. His son Isaac asked, Father, who will provide the sacrifice? Because Isaac didn't know Abraham is going to take his life away. And then he says, God is going to provide. And by the time he reaches on top the mountain, now Abraham realizes who this God is. Because the moment Abraham is about to slit his throat, kill him, God says, stop. Don't kill him because I will provide you the sacrifice. Are you with me? So what was happening in the Old Testament, in the life of Abraham, was a picture what was happening in the New Testament. Like Abraham, we were all religion, religion what it does is we try to please God by sacrificing, sacrificing, sacrificing. Jesus comes and says, listen, stop sacrificing. I am going to be your sacrifice. Are you with me? 
I am going to be your ultimate sacrifice. And so the whole Old Testament looks at God as someone who wants something from you, looks at God as someone who wants to punish you, waiting for an opportunity to punish you. But in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 1 says, Jesus is the full expression of who God is. And in the New Testament, we get to see who, what is the real character of this God. This God was the one who became man, died on the cross, died and sacrificed himself for you and me so that you and I have no longer to sacrifice anything for him. Are you with me? So, isn't it amazing to worship this God? We come here to worship this God. This God who is waiting for an opportunity to bless us. Say, my God is waiting for an opportunity to bless me. He's waiting for an opportunity to heal me. He's waiting for an opportunity to, to bless me abundantly. Okay, it's very important to know who this God is in your life. If you don't know this God, you miss your blessing because your right believing causes right living. Are you with me? Your right believing causes your right living. That means you believe right things about God, you will live right in your life. Your wrong believing leads you to wrong living. Are you with me? And therefore, it is so important that we come here to know who this God is. What is his character? If you believe God is the one who punishes you every drop of, what is that drop of? Pin drop. He is, then it's, that is how you are going to live your life. But if you are going to believe that God is waiting to bless for, with every opportunity, then you are going to be the most blessed person in this world. Are you with me? Okay, so we are in, the, in this uh, uh, series where we are talking about Missio Dei or we are talking about Missiology which is the mission of God. Right? And the mission of God right from Genesis to the book of Revelation if you notice all that God wants is he wants to reach out and want to bless you. He wants you to have a relationship with each, with each one of you. So he chooses the people of Israel and says, look, people of Israel, I'm going to be your God. We're going to have a relationship. And so we call it covenant. Everyone say covenant. So he builds a relationship. And he says, now through Israel, I will bless all the nations of the world. That means I will also, Israel is going to be my launch pad. And through this launch pad, I will also go ahead and bless all the nations of the world. Unfortunately, every time Israel fails, Israel fails to portray this God to the nations. So, in the Old Testament, if you wanted to be blessed, you have to come and be part of Israel. Are you with me? So, this was a nation... And then people would have to come and become part of this nation Israel. And they would get blessed. And so we see Ruth. When is she blessed? Ruth is blessed when she attaches herself back to Naomi, back to Israel. And she says, your God is going to be my God. Are you with me? Are you understanding what I am trying to tell you? So... In the Old Testament, people would have to come and be part of it. But in the New Testament, something changes. Everyone says something changes. Okay, when Jesus comes, he, the whole model changes. It becomes what we call as centrifugal. Means now, it's not uh, you come and then be part of it and get blessed. But now, Jesus tells his disciples... Go out and make disciples and then they shall be blessed. It's centrifugal means first it was inflow, now it is outflow of the spirit. Are you with me? 
And so what is the difference between we Christian is the moment we believe in Jesus, we are supposed to be centrifugal. That means we have to go out, out into the world so that the world gets blessed. I'm not talking about people have got very wrong idea. We want to preach Jesus to save them from going to hell. That's not what Jesus came to preach. Jesus came to increase the kingdom. That means reconcile men back to God. So that everyone can have one-to-one connection and relationship with God. And make this God their father. You become his son. This is what Jesus wanted to do on earth. Are you with me? And the reason they wanted to kill him is because he called God Father. He called God Father. That's why they wanted to kill him. Everybody used to, in the old, in the religion where Jesus comes from, they thought this God is angry, he's upset, he's waiting to punish for every law that you break. And here comes Jesus and says, Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Are you with me? Heard that? Yeah. And so, before Jesus goes, he gives a mission. Everyone say mission. So let's go to, are you you still excited? Sure? Don't tell lies, okay? No hypocrisy here, okay. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Okay, it says, but, everyone can say, read with me, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Very, this is just before he goes up. He gives this last command. What is the command? When the Holy Spirit comes over you, what shall happen? You shall fall down. Huh? Ah! <laughs> I'm not against falling down, okay? <laughs> When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, what happens? Seven demons will come out of you. Is it there? When the Holy Spirit comes on you, it says, come on, you shall be witnesses. Everyone shout loud, witnesses. You shall be witnesses And we're going to break this verse today. Witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Everyone shout out Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Judea. Judea. Samaria. Samaria. And then to the end of the earth. It's very important. Let's, Let's talk about this. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, God calls you as witnesses. We are called as How many of you have Holy Spirit here? Very unsure. (laughs) I wish I asked this the opposite question. How many of you have evil spirit here? (laughs) So when the Holy Spirit comes on you, the first label that you get is you are called as witness. You're not called as a believer. Have you read that? You are not called as a believer. You are not called as Christian. You are not called as Catholic. You are not called as somebody else. You are called as a witness. You are called as witness. You are called as witness. You are called as witness. What does witness mean? Witness means the one who testifies. One who gives testimony. One who shares the experience of what happened in your life. 
that is called a witness are you with me that means why do you guys come here you come here as witnesses you have witnessed something jesus has done into your life right has jesus done anything in your life yes or no if jesus has done anything in your life then you are called to witness that what god has done in your life and this is what i want to talk about is you got to testify and testimony is very important are you with me testimony is very important witnessing is very important because the more you testify the more that thing becomes physical in your life do you understand can we talk little little science okay now i was talking about this in quantum physics it will tell you that the when they go to the smallest particle listen carefully okay the smallest particle in quantum physics they will talk about it's not a particle it's a wave everyone say wave okay and what they found out is okay there is a double slit experiment you can check it out what they found out is when an observer tries to observe it then only it becomes a particle are you there when an observer tries to observe it then only it becomes a particle if the observer doesn't observe it then it is not a particle so electron is no longer an electron if nobody is watching it it's only when somebody tries to watch it the electron becomes an electron in other words you can put it in this big way that everything in the, around us is created because somebody tried to observe it are you with me because you are trying to observe it there is something called a string theory and all that i won't go there but because you are trying to observe this wall this wall is actually existing this wall wouldn't exist if nobody observed it you understand i'm just trying to paraphrase it this is quantum physics this is science that if you try to observe something that becomes your reality if you don't try to observe it it is no longer your reality are you there that means if you try to witness it becomes your reality if you don't witness it's not your reality and so if you watch carefully the entire bible you will see even in the new testament jesus is focusing lots on witnesses because when witness come it becomes a reality that's why the bible says when two or three are gathered in my name and if they believe in anything it shall happen who are these two or three they are witnesses trying to observe are you are you there with me so it's very important who are witnessing so the the world might be witnessing the doctor you see suppose you get a sickness suppose somebody has got a tumor now lab reports are done doctor knows it that person knows it three people know about the, know about the tumor so now the tumor is coming into physical reality because how many people have observed it three people have observed it and the more people keep observing it the more it will come into reality and if the doctor says you are going to die in 3 months trust me you are going to die in 3 months because now three and more people are started believing or witnessing what the doctor has said are you there this is where the church comes in the picture the church says okay 
this is the reality that you are creating. The church says, we are going to create a new reality. And the church says, no, we believe this person will not die. This person will live. This cancer will go away in Jesus' name. And then there's a new reality created by new witnesses. So there are two witnesses. One is false witness. One is true witness. And God is calling the true witness to rise up. You and I are the true witness. Why do you think people come here and get healed? Because the other witness of the world has said you are not going to be healed, you are going to be sick. When you come here, we all are saying, yay, Jesus is going to heal you. We are collapsing the wave into a matter. We are saying, yeah, Jesus is going to heal you. Somebody is saying, your bank balance is saying, your finances are going to be, ze- your finances are zero, you have so much debt, you are going to be over, bankrupt. You come here and we as church say, yeah, rejoice in the name of Jesus, you are going to be blessed financially. We are collapsing the wave. And then financial blessings come into your life. Because we are becoming the true witness. We are creating a new reality in your life. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you understanding? And so God is calling the church. The moment you believe in Jesus, it doesn't make you a believer. It makes you a witness. It makes you a witness. God has called you to become a witness. That means you need to open your mouth and tell people, listen, this is resurrection. What does resurrection mean? Resurrection means when everybody thought there is no hope for Jesus to come back to life, they literally put a stone there. When, when the disciples went for their, back into their business, Jesus came back to life and says, look, I am your hope. Death could not hold me. Grave could not hold me. Are you with me? This is resurrection. The church has resurrection power inside of them. That means where there is hopelessness, you come into the church, the church says, hey, listen, there is hope. There's going to be life. Your business is going to prosper. Your finances are going to prosper. Because now we are going to create a new reality for you. The world says there is no reality for you. There is no hope for you. The church says there is hope. Come on. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Why a person gets blessed in the church? Because there are people in the church who are hoping for something supernatural in your life. This is a place where your reality changes. This is a place where we witness the real reality that we want to create in you. Come on. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? This is a place, you know, that's what a prophetic church is. Why? A prophet is creating reality in your life. Because a prophet a creates, is witnessing something that you have not seen. Are you with me? Some people can't see their future. Oh, my future is bad. This is going to happen. That is going to happen. Oh, um, this, this ponvati has come in my life. Then the prophet comes and says, listen. I prophesy that you are going to be blessed. I prophesy that you are going to be financially prosperous. I prophesy that things are going to be next level in your life. Now, the prophet has created, witness a new reality in your life. And this is what God calls. In, in Jesus says, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. I, when the Holy Spirit comes, you shall be a testimony. You shall be a witness. 
and being a testimony is very important because once you see a testimony then that testimony multiplies okay there was this guy, guy called as Roger Bannister I spoke about him back in those days nobody could run one minute a, a mile one minute right four minutes four minutes a mile four minutes a mile nobody could run that right and so nobody could break that record and everyone thought this is impossible to break that record this guy Roger Bannister broke that record the day he broke the record immediately immediately year after year people started breaking that record for years nobody could break the record the moment he broke the record he became a testimony he became a witness saying that look the world is saying you can't break the record I broke it because I broke it now everybody he becomes a testimony he becomes a witness and when everyone sees oh lovely he broke it that means we also can and then year after year everyone many people started breaking the record are you understanding yeah the same thing if you read the scripture the lady who wanted healing she was suffering for 16 years of blood issue I think and then she goes and touches the hem of the garment of Jesus and she receives healing before that all the disciples everybody thousands of people are touching Jesus nobody is getting healed but one lady touches the hem of the garment and says if I touch the hem of this garment his garment I'm going to get healed and when she gets healed if you read further it says now everybody who touched the hem of the garment of Jesus gets healed the lady becomes a testimony witness everyone shout witness, witness. testimony someone's tested I always say this I've always been saying this somebody's testimony is your prophecy if somebody in this church says I got healed that means next you are going to get healed if somebody in this church says I got financial blessing be sure next it is your turn that's why when somebody gives a testimony everyone should rejoice because that's your prophecy Last time, what was your testimony? She got a job. Somebody now sh should know that you are also going to get an opportunity of something new that is going to happen. If she got a job, you're going to get a new business. Come on. If she got a job, you're going to get something new now. And so be keen, be open minded to listen to testimonies. Because that testimony is your prophecy for sure. That lady who touched the hem of Jesus' garment, her testimony was a prophecy for thousand people's healing. Can you believe that? After she got healed, thousands of people started getting healed just by touching the hem of the garment. Can you believe that? And so if somebody testifies, it's somebody else's blessing. And so God is calling us to be a witness, to be a testimony in this, in this world. And it is so important. That is the mission. That is the mission that each so-called Christian has. The problem is we don't want to share our testimony. What is happening? Why are you going every Sunday that place? God wants you to go and share. Be the testimony. Are you with me? Be the witness. Why are you going there every Sunday? What is... What is really exciting you to go there every Sunday? 
to church you are called to witness that what you experience here during worship what you experience here through the word what you experience here after coming here your duty my friend is to go and to share your testimony be a witness that is your duty that's the only commission god has given you that's your mission are you with me in our in our uh, group whatsapp group i see uh, the, we have all this three times prayer i see after every time of prayer i see the i read the testimonies somebody says today somebody saw fireball vision and this thing somebody experience electricity in the body somebody felt this somebody felt that those testimonies are so important how many of us are reading that i read that because i know when i read that the glory that that person experience i also will experience the same are you with me when in the church i look out only for one person who can feel the anointing if one person here experiences the anointing and falls down and prays in tongue trust me in another 5 minutes everyone will do that same thing you know because that becomes a witness a testimony for everybody it just needs one person one witness one person one person receives everyone receives are you with me this is the beauty of church this is the beauty of community this is why we do church are you with me now it says listen to this carefully acts chapter 1 you shall be witnesses to me everyone say in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the end of the earth what does this mean have you seen something here there's a pattern there have you seen the pattern it's saying after you experience jesus you shall share that testimony or be the witness first where loudly where in jerusalem where is jerusalem jerusalem is the place they are place next immediate place is where judea after judea was what samaria after samaria was what to the whole world are you with me that means the moment you become a, you experience god you hear a testimony something has happened in your life it's your duty to first go and to tell the immediate person that you are close to <coughs> are you with me are you understanding you share with the immediate person that you are close to how many of you have friends okay let's say first you share to your own church members look at this structure if something god does in your life or you experience god in your life first thing you share here jerusalem this is your jerusalem second you share to your judea who are your judeas your best friends your neighbors do you have friends do they at least know zion's gate if they don't know zion's gate something is seriously wrong <laughs> not with zion's gate with you <laughs> if your friends don't know what you have experience you are not becoming the witness something is missing 
ayude if your neighbor don't know that on sunday you come here something is wrong are you with me i don't want to know anybody to know that i am the sunday i am going there mm, because you know they will say i am become believer i am become this that this <laughs> so every sunday at 5 o'clock i go for marketing <laughs> or family outing to eat bel puri i eat my bel puri 7:30 i am back home <laughs> no you have to know people have to know that you come here and you experience god in your life so Jerusalem should know Judea should know then comes Samaria all your facebook friends should know all your instagram people should know you understand the woman who came near the well i think in john 6 right i don't know four or six i don't know woman went to the well she was hidingly going there because she had lot of affairs and she finally meets this guy called as jesus she has a jesus comes and tells him tells her listen woman you had uh, so many men in your life and the now you are sleeping with is not your husband he only told her this no healing no miracle no signs no wonders her life changed and then it is mentioned she became a testimony to the whole of that region samaria everyone knew jesus the moment this woman was touched are you there are you with me i come so many every sunday i'm telling a pin code i'm telling a atm card and i'm telling everything <laughs> samaria also doesn't know me judea also doesn't know me do you understand that woman was so touched that she could not she became a testimony and a witness of what how god touched her life how do you think the disciples increased when one disciple jesus said to one disciple come follow me they went and they went and they spoke to somebody else and said you know we found the messiah they went and said you know we found that one that we were searching for and that's how the disciples increased if you uh we are guys please understand the problem is why why we are so uh slack we are slack because we call ourselves christians because we call ourselves believers we should stop calling ourselves christians we are not called to become christians we are called to become witnesses i wish that word was not there christians we are not called to become christians we are called to be witnesses <coughs> christianity is just another religion and jesus never came to build another religion jesus came to raise up witnesses the one who experiences him and changes their life and their life is transformed and their life is converted not their religion are you with me we have made conversion of religion jesus was not interested in converting religion jesus was interested in converting our life and so god calls us to witness witness jerusalem what happened to you your the church members should know sometimes people get blessed you know crazy things happen i know people get crazy crazy blessings they don't want to share in the church 
they'll come to know I got five lakhs. <laughs> they come to know I got 50 lakhs in my... Now you ask Eliza, she said I got job. You ask her how much they're paying, I'll tell you later she'll say. <laughs> I'm just joking, but that's how we are. We don't want to share to somebody else what has happened in our life, how God has touched us, how God has transformed us, and so we become bad witnesses. Are you with me? We are called to witness. What have your experience been? If I have prophesied, go and tell people that this guy didn't even know me. I came for the first time. I think everyone over here has been prophesied over me. And he told the, me this thing which is not possible at all. Go and witness. It's not me, it's God who has done in your life. Are you with me? Go and be witness. And this is what it means to be witness. When you share things with your church member and say, this is my testimony. When you go to your best friend and say, this is my testimony. When you go, you know, I, recently my best friend is coming to me where we have, every day we talk. And every day we talk, I tell him something about what God is doing in my life. He comes to, he comes to learn violin with me. So, he comes for one hour, half an hour I teach violin, half an hour I tell him, give my sermon. And he's like, wow, this is interesting. It's so important that every person that you meet, you become a witness to that person about what God has done in your life. And today it's so easy. Be witness, be a testimony, be a witness to your, to your family, be a witness to your neighbor, be a witness on social media, guys. Are you with me? We are, we are, we, we, we so easily share some jokes on, on what does reels, right? Today my mother was sharing some funny joke. We, <laughs> we share some, so easily some jokes, which is good, you should. But don't forget that you are also a witness, you need to share. Share this teaching if it has touched your life. Are you with me? How many of us share this teaching if it has touched your life? If you don't, if you don't, if you don't, the thing is we are worried. You see, that same woman who was hiding from everybody went out. Where is that? Which chapter it is? John, uh, the woman at the... Because then if I don't show you scripture, you will, you will say this guy is simply telling me some bullshit. <laughs> Look here. Where is it? 4.28. The woman then left her water. Look. This woman in the hot sun used to come to the well to collect water. Why? Because during that time nobody comes. She had a phobia of people. Why? Because she was into some really secret things. So why to fall in the mouth of other people? Some of us do that, no? Why do I fall into mouth of my neighbor? I know when my neighbor comes, when my uh, neighbor comes out, when they go inside, I know their exact timing. When they don't come, that is the time I will come out. <laughs> Are you with me? This woman was like that, right? And the woman came that afternoon and Jesus, she had an experience with Jesus. She came to get water. Look. The woman then left her water pot. 
she came to get her water. After having an encounter with Jesus, she leaves her water pot. And then went her way into the city. Everyone shout out city. You're sure? City. And said to the man, come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. She's literally saying, come, I'm going to show you that man who told me that I had six husbands. This is what she said. Shameless. When it came to become a witness. And so she said, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out to the city and came to him. Is it, that's it, right? She went, she goes to the city and tell everybody without any shame. She leaves a water pot, everything. Today we can't click a button to share, like, subscribe. Are you with me? It's so difficult. Because we think, my friends, what they will say. Or who will watch us? Oh, I'm going for prayer. What day? You're going for prayer? No, you're not going to do rob somebody. You're going for prayer. You're not going to rob some bank on Sunday. Correct? Share and become a witness. Share on social media and become a witness. Share with your friends and become witness. It's our duty to become witness and a testimony to every person that we meet in our life. It is only then your blessing. It's only then your blessing is sure. Are you there? There were 10 lepers, the Bible says. How many? 10 lepers. Jesus heals all 10. How many? And then only how many come back? One comes back and says, thank you Jesus, you healed me. And then Jesus says, you are healed completely. When you testify... Your blessing is established. Because now you are observing, you are witnessing your own blessing. You, the more you witness, the more you speak about, what happens is it's becoming materialized, materialized. The wave becomes a matter, your reality. Are you with me? For me, like truly, I'll tell you, when something happens, I will make sure, I will keep speaking about it to everybody possible because the more I speak, I know the more I will be immersed in that blessing. Are you there? The more you, what you witness is more it becomes a reality. So every time if you go and say to somebody, you know, you know, you know, I got diabetes. You know, you know, no, I got diabetes. You know, doctor is saying nothing is going to happen. Hey, hey, you know, listen, hey, Kotrin, come here. Hey, this one, come here. Hey, Sukorin, come here. I got diabetes. <laughs> and the more you say, you say, you say, you say, because you want self pity, you want I got diabetes. Ah, you took a pie and took a mock diabetes. So you keep telling, you keep telling, you keep telling. It becomes more, 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 more. But when you get healed, you don't want to tell anybody. Even the slightest healing, if you feel better, you're supposed to tell. You're supposed to tell. Do you understand? Even slightest you become better, even when you go to forget about spirituality, even if you go to a doctor and you take medicine, even slight if you feel good, you should keep telling everybody, you know, that I think that medicine works. I think I'm getting healed. I think I'm getting better. I think I'm getting better. 
If you keep telling that, now what is happening is you're witnessing a new reality and that you will become better. Or you go to a doctor, take a lagna maga. <laughs> Do you understand? But the moment you take something, medicine, you have to witness it. I'm getting better, I'm getting better, I'm getting better. I'm not saying keep lying to yourself, but at least witness the little that you have. I love when people get gold dust. One speck, oh, I got gold dust, I got gold dust, I got... And you see, in another 10 minutes time, the whole hand is gold. Do you understand? If you know me, if you know me, for long enough, you will notice one little thing also happens. I put on YouTube, I put on Facebook. This is the testimony. If you know me, have you seen me? Why do I do that? Because once I do that, I keep telling myself, this is now becoming my reality. Sometimes people get upset. Every time this guy is putting things on Facebook and this, all this testimony, all this testimony. Why? I do it because when I keep putting it, I become more supernatural in my life. And so, when, when somebody prays over you, how are you feeling? I think 1% better. Good. Rejoice in that 1%. Go tell somebody, you know, I went there for the prayer, I felt 1% better. And the more people you tell, you know, I went there this Sunday, 1% better. 1% better, 1% better. Trust me, by the next Sunday, you're 100% better. Because you have made a created a reality, collapsed the wave into matter. Are you with me? That's, that is why Jesus was so interested in witnesses. Jesus was interested in testimony. Without witnesses, if you notice, nothing major happens in the gospel. Why Jesus was take, uh, taking baptism? Jesus, do you understand? Jesus, God, who became man, why did he need baptism? What a baptism? Because he wanted John the Baptist and his disciples to witness it. To witness the heaven open and the Holy Spirit come on him. Are you with me? Because it's only after a witness he could go ahead and do a ministry. During the transfiguration, there are two witnesses that come, Elijah and Moses. Why witnesses are required? For Jesus to be crucified, there were need of witnesses. Every time you see witnesses, 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 something major, God says, I need witnesses. Because when there are witnesses, there are testimonies, life becomes reality. I want to bring this to a close. I want to share with you, I want, to, I want you to contemplate on this. The word that you hear in this place, Become witness to that word. The miracles that you see, become witness to that miracle. What God is doing in your life, become witness to that. It, because the more you witness, the more you testify, the more it will multiply in your life. Are you with me? How do you multiply your miracles? Come on, testify. We are very good in multiplying something else. False witnesses. That's called gossip. Right? Ago, Tege, Kazra, Kitu, Gyoti, Team, Go, 
ग्रीन कलर ते सोनी थीम गाता गो सारी पिस्ता आइस्क्रीम दसत मुगो तंगे देडियो That that witness we are very good at, right? We are very good at those witnesses. How about really being real witnesses? Every time you open your mouth with somebody, testify yourself. Testify yourself. You know, I come across many people for so many years. Don't want to share what God is doing in their life. No, everybody will come. No door lock to leave. दौड़ लगता लो सो समबडीज आईज आर कॉलेप्सिंग योर वेव्स यू कॉलेप्स योर वेव्स राइट यू कॉलेप्स योर वेव एंड क्रिएट अ रियलिटी समबडी एल्स इज आईज वाई इट शुड कॉलेप्स योर वेव्स आर यू विद मी शेयर द मोर यू शेयर the more you testify the more you multiply your blessing that's it full stop open your mouth and testify use those fingers press that like share button do you understand share 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 whatsapp facebook instagram whatever gram share it let the world know that you are a testimony of jesus christ who cares what others say to about you your duty that god has given you jesus before living the earth has given you that you may become a testimony to the ends of the world ends of the world share it let people know what is happening in your life let people know what word is going here in goa let people know what miracles happen in zion's gate church let people know because when they know it will multiply more in your life it's going to multiply i'm to, i i'm 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 sure in the days to come you see the supernatural will increase in your life when you do this you will see miracles healing signs wonders will increase in your life you know the reason if you see if you i really want you go to my youtube channel and keep there are playlist of prophecies i'll tell you how i do do you, if i don't if i have not prayed if i have not prayed enough and i want to prophesy over your life you understand if i have not prayed enough and i want to prophesy in your life like i want to tell your details of your house your home and whatever and shock you you know what do i do i go to my youtube old prophecies and i watch how i prophesied when i do that when i come here automatically prophecies will come out without praying because what i do is i observe and i observe my own i witness my own prophecies If I want gold dust, I want gemstones falling here, and angel fall for uh, feathers uh, manifesting in the house. You know what I do? I have a playlist on the you you check it is there on glory manifestation. I'll watch all the videos of that, and I'll say, God, wow, these things really happened, and now I believe it will happen again. Do you want to experience gold dust, gemstones, all these things? That yes, also is not coming. <laughs> Thank you. Go watch. Really, I'm telling you. Before COVID, we used to put on the projector all those testimonies. 
Do you want to get healed? Watch healing testimonies. Do you want to see miracles in your life? Watch miracle testimonies on our YouTube channel. You will see that same thing will happen in your life. There's going to be a time of supernatural that will come in your life very soon. God will exceedingly increase you. Bless you. Go watch healing testimonies. Go watch. If you're having financial problem, watch the financial, pro financial testimonies that have happened in our church. Watch and share. Watch the healing testimonies and share. I'm telling you, the prophetic that happens here, I'm telling you and humbly telling you without boasting, it doesn't happen anywhere in Goa. If it happens, sure, I'm telling you, it is from other sources. <laughs> but I'm so sure it doesn't happen. But the question is, how many of us are testifying? Are you with me? How many of us are testifying? Testify. You're sharing now, what? She's sharing now. Slowly she removed her mobile. Ah, now I'm going to share. <laughs> Let's do it. Will you do it? Will you go and become witness to, to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, to the end of the world, to Facebook, to... In, huh? Why that yes becomes low to Facebook, yeah. to WhatsApp, yeah. to Telegram, yeah. whatever gram, Snapchat. Ah, Snapchat, whoever. Yeah. Will you? Ah, kono? Wani kono? Ah, Instagram. <laughs> Guys, as we become these witnesses, trust me, a season of supernatural will start in your life and my life. Yeah. Amen. Come on, amen. Yeah. We, shall we do that? This season, this week, I want you to focus lots on testimonies. Will you do that? Yes. This week, I want you to go, go on our YouTube channel, listen to testimonies, watch, share, do whatever you want. Share our the teachings. As you do that, as you get involved in it, trust me, that what we speak here, that what we preach here, that power and glory that we preach here, that is going to become your reality in the days to come. That's going to be your prophecy. Tonight I'm not going to prophesy over you. I want you to get your prophecy. Do you understand? I want you to get your prophecy. Because I'm telling you, the world is telling you exactly opposite, guys. Listen. The world is telling you exactly opposite. We come in the picture to create a new reality. Come on. No, thank you, Vanika. Only she supports me. Can I have an amen now? Amen. Okay. See, one person said amen, all of you said amen. <laughs> you know, can I, can I share your thing if you don't mind? You see how reality gets created in your life. Like, this is why I... I learned a lot of astrology and everything. I believe in that. But I don't promote that. Do you understand? Because it's like doctors giving you a report. Suppose a doctor says to you, you have this disease and another six months time you're going to die. And if you believe in that report, you will, you will surely die, guys. Are you understanding? Same thing, you have to be careful when you go to a spiritualist. Even a Christian prophet. Hello? No, no, wait, wait. I'm, I'm coming to that. Even if you go to a Christian prophet, I'm saying even if you go to a Christian prophet, if you go to an Christian prophet, and if that Christian prophet says, you have this demon, this demon, this demon in your house, and your house is haunted, and uh, 
you it's 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 all evil spirits in your house in your in your pocket in your under your bed if they say that and you believe that trust me he has created a reality in your life you next one week you're going to experience demons hello and if you go to an astrologer and if the astrologer tells you this is your whatever kundli this is your future this is your kundli this is what is going to happen and if you believe that that report no doubt how accurate it is but if you believe that that's exactly what is going to happen in your life are you with me that's why i'm very kept i'm very protective of my people i don't allow them to go elsewhere for prayer i know somebody who prophesied over someone saying you are going to get married to this particular person that person got married to that particular person and then got divorced so i'm very careful with people who prophesy because they might be able to prophesy but i don't think so they are matured enough to prophesy what they prophesy are you with me you have to reach to a maturity to become a matured prophet you have to know what you should prophesy and what you should not prophesy so if you believe in anybody who tells you something that's going to be a reality the new testament prophecy is to build you up that's what the bible says to build you up to equip you and to encourage you new testament prophecy is not about last night you went into so and so person's house there you did all golmal with that person <laughs> that is not new testament prophecy you understand many those kind of things are going around i know somebody who was telling giving prophecy i am seeing vision last yesterday 5 o'clock in the evening you went to the market and brought five bangades <laughs> oh, really i am saying this are prophecies <laughs> five bangades so what is the prophecy now five bangades <laughs> bangade prophecy <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it it has to come with a message that now what god is going to do positive in your life if it is coming with a message that negative things are going to happen in your life that means you the prophet is collapsing a reality on your life that brings negativity in your life a astrologer is collapsing something negative in your life that brings negative reality in your life so that is the difference a doctor cannot create that reality a astrologer cannot create the reality they can only give you reports the astrologer can look at the sun moon everything and scientifically according to their algorithms can give you a report but they can't create your reality you come to a pastor a preacher who has been by filled with the power of the holy spirit to be a witness to jerusalem judea samaria ends of the earth and when he becomes witness your reality is created come on give the lord a big hand and tonight god is calling you because the holy spirit came in the book of acts chapter 2 and it says when the holy spirit comes it shall come on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy everyone is called to prophesy in this place that means everyone is called to become witness to become a testimony because your witnessing your testimony is is somebody else's prophecy 
tonight, let's pray. We pray that God gives us grace. I want you, come on, let's all stand up. Ah, you have a testimony. Okay, wow, listen, let's listen to testimony. Oh, you can stand up, stand up. Okay. Uh, no, no, it's, it's on. Yeah. So, uh, just one and a half years uh, ago, I... Uh, uh, I got a prophecy by uh, P.S. He said, like, I, I'm, I'll be blessed with a uh, job. So i blessed with a job, and um, I'm working there now. So uh, the job was like, you know, uh, meaning when I was praying to God, it was like, my prayer was like, uh, God, if you, meaning create a vacancy in that particular organization for me. So I had not gone there, uh, meaning uh, it was like a new department altogether. And I was selected, so I went there, and uh, you know, I was having only six month experience in that particular area. So when I went there, like everything was new to me, and uh, as I'm working, in, I, I'm working for corporate, uh, we have like nine manufacturing units all over uh, India. And the three major units are in Goa, Goa, plant one, two, and three. So among that three units, the two one is the major one, which we get the profit from. Okay, so, and it is a sterilization plant where I was not knowing the meaning of sterilization also when I was there. And uh, there were many, like, you know, uh, the procedures, the documentation was so new to me. So whenever my sir used to ask me, I used to say, like, sir, we'll do it. This was my answer, we'll do it. So like uh, last one year, we've been, uh, meaning I've, I've been there uh, doing the documents. We started from the scratch, nothing was there. I was given one junior and with, the, with two of us, with the help of our sir and HOD, we were doing this. Uh, so she was like always scared, that girl. But I told her like, you don't worry let's do it together and then we were doing you know so like uh, during my appraisal sir said like this time uh, uh, you know we have completed 80 percent of uh, what we have what we were doing so it was like a new department and from zero to 80 percent was a high limit for me so that was the first thing we saw said and yesterday uh, it was our vp's birthday okay vice president so his birthday is like feast for us. So we celebrate in a very different way and all the top management people were there. So, and uh, some people who wouldn't come, they were online. It was like a Zoom meeting for all. So after the celebration was over, uh, sir told to wait, okay? And uh, the top management from plant two, they were there. So we all were waiting. So we thought like uh, maybe for a picture they made us wait there. So we were just there and he called out my name and he said like, you know, you and your team is highly appreciated because what you have done for last uh, one and a half year. So it was a great milestone for us for completing all the document from scratch to that particular level, you know. The, the verse was so touching, meaning I have never ever experienced somebody who is praising us so much in front of all the top management. And that too, the appreciation was from other plants. So my VP was very happy. And uh, then uh, at, at last when I went there, I, I told sir, you know, sir, like uh, I thank you for appointing me for this particular job because I was not having any experience. So he said maybe, uh, no, he said, it's your own efforts and your hard work. Uh, so you don't uh, give me that, uh, you know, what is uh, credit. So I was like, uh, I said, OK. But uh, I know it is not my hard work or efforts, but uh, it is uh, God's favor upon us and my church prayers. So it was like, you know, meaning this appreciation, I have never, ever heard from anybody. So it was from top management, and uh, we were like highly appreciated yesterday. Amen. Come on. That's all. Beautiful testimony. Beautiful testimony. Now her testimony is your prophecy. Okay. As she has favor, may you experience favor. May you be ex appreciated in every level, every area of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You see. You see what is happening. You know everything is connected to jobs. 
everything is like it started from Eliza, right? It was something to do with job. Then uh, Vernika, she had audit and it went well. Something coming. Now Nasilia has something. I believe something related to jobs, something related to favor, something related to appreciation. God is going to release over everyone tonight in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to receive that, you know. I want you to be a testimony. I want you to go and speak it out to everyone that you go to Zion's Gate Church and because of that, God's favor is over your life and God up keeps uplifting you. In Jesus' mighty name.